Nearly 11 years ago, publisher Ubisoft released Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, another game in their long-running stealth franchise. In a surprise twist back then, there was more to do than simply assassinating Templars, diving off high vantage points into haystacks and hiding in bushes. Perhaps unwittingly, the development team also made it a rather in-depth pirate game, with a ship to manage and upgrade, huge nautical battles to take part in, and of course all of the land-based assassin stuff fans would have expected. In short, it was genuinely rather good, and personally, I started to hate all of the land-based missions entirely, wanting to spend my entire time at sea. Ubisoft, ever one to sniff out a potential new franchise, quickly decided to develop a standalone pirate game and in 2017 announced Skull and Bones. Initially dubbed as a <laughs> Sea of Thieves killer, the development of this game has been anything but smooth, but it's finally arrived at port as a live service pirate MMO light after six delays. After such a turbulent development lasting at least 10 years over clearly very choppy seas, one important question remains. Is it any good? Skull and Bones eases you into the game with a decent tutorial in ship-to-ship -ship nautical combat before you come up against a massive fleet that puts an end to your ship and crew. Waking up in a makeshift DAO, you'll create your character from a rather lacklustre selection of faces and hairstyles, scavenge some supplies, explore some shipwrecks and fend off some sharks before setting off to Pirate Sanctuary St. Anne to begin your journey of redemption as you aim to rule the seas as a pirate kingpin. Any comparisons you may have thought you should have with the long-running Sea of Thieves should end right here. This is not a pirate simulator, and while you do have a character to play with and dress up, it's ultimately not the focus. Sea of Thieves is all about the fantasy of playing as a pirate, and this is more of a pirate ship RPG than anything else, and you primarily play as your ship most of the time. Initially this feels weird, but it does start to make sense the more you play. Once you arrive at St. Anne, you'll take on many, many, many quests. Building your first ship, your first set of tools to harvest resources, your first set of hull pulverizing cannons. All of the on-foot sections take place in many of the 620 square kilometer open world's hubs ports and visually unique locations where players can explore, but with a limited moveset and some very janky animation. They usually contain a variety of NPCs from which you can buy resources and blueprints, the latter of which is very useful when it comes to upgrading your gear, but functionally all of these places are the same. All of those ports can be travelled between via fast travel if you've got the silver to pay for it. There is a story of sorts to get out of the way, weaving a tale of two pirate kingpins that focus on two different sides of the large open world. First there's John Skurlock, a typical raspy pirate who will use you to save his own skin at the first opportunity. Then there's the Admiral Rama, who you'll encounter later on and has her own agenda. There's not much meat on the bone here, and while it's all well voice acted, you'll find yourself mashing the A button to skip the conversations and get down to questing sooner rather than later. Playing through these NPC campaigns is useful, however, because it's a great way to unlock items and importantly, large amounts of infamy. Skull and Bones is genuinely great fun to play in co-op and includes a trading mechanic allowing you to gift most resources to friends who are just getting started so they can get going a little easier. Progress however is locked to the group leader only, but you'll still get all of the silver and infamy earned through playing any missions in their world. You'll often see other players fairly often across the seas, but you can't be attacked by them unless you choose to engage in PvP activities. Infamy is key in Skull and Bones in order to access better gear, ships and loot. The game, being live service, will tease you with the high level blueprints and builds from the get go, but you won't be able to equip or purchase anything unless you have a high enough level of infamy. With rankings from Outcast, which is where you start from, all the way to Pirate Kingpin, infamy can be earned in various amounts, just from sailing your ship around the Indian Ocean, sinking other vessels, completing raids on ports, forts and lumberyards, and of course completing quests from various NPCs. 
your ship, which is what Skull and Bones is ultimately focused on, has a power rank, which you can raise by equipping better gear to increase your overall power level. It can actually get quite complicated. Some ships are better at taking a pounding and providing healing to your fleet in co-op. Others are built for speed and attack power. And if you want to build or have anything of worth, you'll need to craft it. What this means, of course, is that a lot of your time in Skull and Bones will be focused on gathering the resources you need to build what you want. From harvesting resources from the land, sinking ships that may be carrying what you need on the many trade routes throughout the map, there is a lot of live service busy work to contend with. This may not be for everyone, and it can get very time consuming. And yet, I found the grind to bigger, better and more powerful ships to be weirdly compelling and I've taken great pleasure in successfully attacking a high level Dutch fort just so I could get my hands on a couple of torsion springs. Aside from sailing around harvesting and breaking into shipwrecks, one of your main activities will be nautical combat and this is one of the game's strengths, particularly in cooperative play. It is frequently tense, engaging and rewarding to navigate your ship, attack en masse with your fleet and outwit and outmaneuver larger, more powerful vessels. Doing all of that in a hurricane, the sea swelling with waves bigger than the largest galleon is one of the highlights and is genuinely so much fun to experience. There are a variety of activities to undertake beyond ship versus ship, including fights against legendary sea monsters or taking on well defended forts and outposts, which result in wave based loot focused plundering sessions. There is a surprising variety of weaponry one can build and employ, from incredibly accurate long shot cannons and ballista, to airstrike enabling mortar cannons and even more devastating torpedoes. There are also a variety of furniture items you can build that all provide various perks, truly allowing you to build the kind of ship you want. Adjusting and tweaking that build across your fleet of ships is very engaging, and seeing that firepower be deployed against your enemies never got old. Another key part of combat is maintaining your crew's stamina. It can be deployed to trim the sails and push for maximum speed, if the wind is with you, or for ramming enemy vessels. It can also be used to brace against incoming attacks, absorbing some of the damage you would have taken from incoming fire. Balancing all of this while concentrating on hitting the enemy is a delightful dance. Again, being live service, there of course has to be a bevy of endgame activities to contend with once you've reached the Kingpin rank. The Black Market is introduced to you early on, initially tasking you with collecting sugarcane and plant produce to turn into white rum and opium. As the endgame comes to focus, you'll find plenty of PvP and PvPVE activities get introduced, enabling you to take over outposts and produce endgame currency passively, duking it out with other players for the ultimate prize. There are more than a few glitches to contend with here. I've had many deathmark lifted notifications appear over and over, presumably suggesting I was being hunted, but then I wasn't. I've been disconnected on more than a few occasions, and in my initial early game, my cloud save was overridden when swapping between my Xbox and my PC, causing me to lose around five hours of progress. When the open world, co-op and PvP come together though, it can get very entertaining indeed. I question how long I'll find that endgame engaging, and I suspect that for me at least, it'll last as long as I have good friends to play with. The busy work is very, very real, and I suspect you'll know already whether you're into that or not. Skull and Bones can, at times, look quite nice, and other times look decidedly old. The on-ship action, which is where you'll spend the majority of your playtime, is very atmospheric and often pretty. On foot, it's a different story with robotic, dead-eyed NPC characters to interact with ad nauseum and some awful, janky animations and controls. Perhaps it's a symptom of its 10-year development, the game is at least pretty well optimised. I've been playing Skull and Bones across several devices. On PC, the game supports my ultra-wide monitor with ease, and my 4090 is pushing everything to max settings with no perceived issues whatsoever. On my Xbox Series X, the game supports both a quality and 60fps performance mode. I chose the latter because, well, I value my frames over my graphics, okay? It's definitely a softer presentation, but it seemed to hold up well enough even under some crazy action. Despite some bizarre design choices and a very upfront and often horrific grind, I really like Skull and Bones. 
I feel conflicted even saying that because, like many that have been looking forward to the idea of an expanded Black Flag-like game, so much of Skull and Bones is designed to be completely different to its original inspiration. And yet, despite my genuine hatred of most grindy games, I've relished building the next big thing and taking on the next big challenge and teaming up with friends. It may not be the quadruple A game that Ubisoft touted, but with a solid enough foundation, a decently planned bevy of seasonal content ahead of it, and the uniqueness of making the ship and gear the focus, it may be finally on the right course after all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and hey, if you really love what we do, head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era where you can support us directly. We'll see you next time.